Hello, sir. Yes. Hello. How are you? Fine, and you? I'm very well. You have been very busy. It's been fun trying to connect and finally meet up. So I feel like we're old friends now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but now you know it's uh, it's okay. We have big storm. I know it's okay. Yeah, yeah. We have so big let's. Storm. Yes. Let's just start by you introduce yourself, your name, and and your history in wine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know it's. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm Loïc Pasquet, so I'm the owner of Liber Pater, and uh, I, I'm on the, the vineyard in the, in the Grave area. It's a one part of the south of uh, Bordeaux, and uh, it's a very special place because it's uh, on the Anticlinal. Anticlinal, it's a very old uh, geological... Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's around five, uh, 50 uh, million years old. So it's very, very so we, can you, to I'm sorry, Loïc, I had a big data lag. Can you back up and tell yes. us where you are again? Yes, okay. So, you know, we, we are in the south of Bordeaux in a Grave, and we are in a very special place. Uh, it's the name of this place is Anticlinal. It's an uh, old, uh, very old uh, uh, geological place. It's uh, 15 million years old. So it's very, very specific in Bordeaux because it's uh, the ground zero of the left bank. So all the small gravel you can see on the left bank come from this uh, small island. So it's very, very special oh. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you know, on the top of this uh, place, in the top of this place, from the top of this soil, we have a small, small part of uh, sand. And this sand protects us against phylloxera. That's why we can replant the vineyard exactly like before phylloxera with ungrafted uh, vine. Wow, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So did you grow up in the wine business or how did you evolve in the wine business? No, no, me, before I was engineer, I worked in, a, in the uh, chemical uh, project in Peugeot car. Uh, you know the company Peugeot? Peugeot, so yeah. Was, yes, so it was uh, new for me. I, I love wine and I was a wine lover and was a wine collector before. And uh, in uh, 2004, I bought uh, this vineyard because uh, the family have no children. So they, they sold this vineyard and it was very, very specific place. I, uh, I, 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 look, I look for uh, during five years to find the big place in Bordeaux. So because I want to find this place with, where I can replant ungrafted vine without American rootstock and with the all uh, native varieties from Bordeaux. You know, for me, it was not interesting to replant uh, Merlot and uh, Cabernet with graft and to make a wine like the other people. It was very important to find the test of the wine before phylloxera. That's why I bought this, uh, this, uh, this place in uh, now it's uh, fi uh, 15, uh, 15 years old. So how did you learn to, to make wine to grow wine? Where did you, did you just learn on your, on your own? No, you know, I didn't learn. I I I, I done any school to 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 learn to make wine. I, I make wine like I uh, like I feel it. Uh, so I I read a lot of book, you know, to to understand how the vineyards was before phylloxera, and after. Uh, you know, it's easy to make wine because you can feel it. If it's not good, if the, if the you can see if the vine is okay or not. If the if everything is well or not. And you know, for me, uh, make wine is very easy because it's only to have a good grapes, and with good grape you put in uh, amphora, and after you have alcoholic fermentation. That's all. You know, for me, wine it's uh, berries with alcoholic fermentation process, and after you can make wine. So it's not it's not very difficult. It's very difficult to 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 um, to. Uh, to understand how is the terroir, how is uh, this place where you work, because each place is different. And what is the, the most important is understand your terroir, the, your climate. It is important. So when you decided what to plant, because there's many, many varieties that are ancient, uh, did you look for old books or did you experiment a little? No, so we, of course we experiment uh, a lot of, but uh, to start, I, uh, I uh, read a lot of books 
because in the book we, we are lucky to have a lot of book uh, to, uh, who explains the, the, the vineyard of Bordeaux before Phylloxera. So I, I read a lot of book and I, and, uh, I can see, I, I can understand what, how was the vineyard. And specifically, specifically my place, because this place it was uh, the very, very special place where we can see the, the grape varieties, everything. You know, wh why for me it's important to have all these varieties? Because today, you know, you can make, to make wine, you have two wines. The first way, you, you can make a wine like a soup. So you say, okay, I want to work on the quality of the varieties. So you plant Merlot for the quality of the Merlot. You know the quality of the Merlot is alcohol, it's fat, it's uh, full body and everything. So you, you can have the specificity of the Merlot. And after you say, okay, I want, to, I want to, to have more structure. So I put Cabernet Sauvignon, like 10% or 20% Cabernet Sauvignon. Like that, I can bring structure in, the, in my blend. So yep. you, you, it's like a soup. You make a, a, a wine with the quality of the varieties. And after you put in the barrel, and in the barrel, you can, you can, you can choose what type of gar barrel and you can change the test of the wine. You can do everything like you want. But for me, it's not wine. It's not our culture. It's, it's, uh, it's industrial pro product with a typicity of, uh, of the quality of the varieties, but it's not wine. What is wine? Wine, it's when the you cannot recognize the varieties on the wine. Wine, uh, the varieties is like a fuse. And if, you, if the, 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 the varieties is like a fuse, you cannot recognize the, the varieties. This is why. That's why it's, I'm not decide what is the, uh, the varieties I put on my terroir. It's the terroir who, dis, who decide what, which varieties I can, pl I can plant on this place. That's why, you know, it's, it's, uh, we are very lucky because in, in Burgundy, you have one grape, it's, uh, it's uh, Pinot Noir because the terroir, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, gray with, uh, with uh, limestone, uh, calcare, it's limestone. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you, you, you have uh, the percentage of uh, clay is different. So with, with uh, one uh, type of grape, uh, Pinot Noir, it's fantastic. For that, you can have uh, uh, many, many messages of the terroir with one. In Bordeaux, it's totally different because in Bordeaux, you have a dry, uh, dry gravel, you have clay, you have uh, gray, you have limestone, we have uh, uh, west, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, west area, zone humid, west area, we uh, west area, right, humid zone. So you, oh, yeah. you can, you can uh, the people understand they need to, the whole winemaker, the whole vigneron understand they need to create uh, specific, specific varieties for each uh, type of soil. Because right. uh, like that, if you have a varieties for each type of soil, you have the good maturity for each type of soil. It's not uh, under uh, maturity. It's not sur maturity. It's the, it's the just maturity. So they created, for example, Petit Verdot for the humid zone. They created Cabernet Sauvignon for gravel, uh, dry gravel. And if you try to plant ungrafted uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in humid zone, he died after three years. He died because it was humid zone. If you put Petit Verdot, ungrafted Petit Verdot on gravel, he died because it's not for uh, for this type of soil. If you use graft, you can do everything. You can put uh, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon on humid zone, and you can put Petit Verdot on gravel. It's it's uh, it's not important. That, that's why it's very important to. To understand, the, 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 we have many, many, many varieties in Bordeaux because we have, very, we have a lot of uh, type of soil, you know, right. and, and it's very important. So what I do, I replant exactly the, each variety on the terroir where they are born. So I replant Cab uh, Cabernet Sauvignon on gravel, I replant uh, Tarnay on gravel with uh, 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 small clay, I replant Casté on the, on the on clay and re, I replant Petit Verdot on the humid zone, everything, you know. I, 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 did, I, I didn't replant the varieties to have the test of the varieties. I replant the varieties on the good soil. Like that, I have not the test of the soil. I, love the, and I, I, am, I have not the test of the, ter, of, the, of the varieties, but I have the message of the terroir. That is very important for me. For yeah. me, it's, it's not the quality of the varieties, it's not sense. You know, if we want the quality of the varieties, we, we can make Cabernet Sauvignon uh, everywhere in the world. 
and you have the quality of the variety. But right. in Europe, in Europe, around the, the Mediterranean Sea or the, the Black Sea, it's more of that, the wine. We have a very specific uh, varieties for each type of sol because it's, it's, a, it's a culture. You know, you so when I, I, yes, it makes a lot of sense when you say it that way. Um, would you remind people the, the history of Bordeaux and why we lost these grapes? Jean-Baptiste kind of gave it to us on Wednesday when I talked to him, but would you explain that when they made the AOC in Bordeaux and why things have changed? But you know, this variety uh, was not uh, forbidden before the Second War, and uh, I think we lost this variety. You know, when I, I, I was the first one to replant these varieties in Bordeaux. Okay. When, when I replant this one uh, now, uh, 15, years, ago, uh, 15 uh, years old, people say, okay, if, if, we, if we don't have these varieties, these varieties are not, are not good. But it's not true. This, uh, we have not this variety because some varieties are difficult to work. Uh, other one, if you graft this variety, is, you have no grape. And, uh, and the people, you know, now they, they don't use this variety because one time again, they want to make uh, uh, wine with the quality of the variety. You know, yeah. people prefer to make wine like a soup, but not like the message of the terroir. And for me, the most important is the message of the terroir. When you drink a, a Liber Pater, you, you, you drink one part of the French history, you, you, you drink one part of our culture. It's, it's not only one, you know. If you drink Liber you it's very specific test. And today, we, today, to use these varieties is forbidden, is the first part. So you, you say, uh, uh, my friend Jean-Baptiste plant uh, also now uh, uh, autochthon native varieties, but when you use native varieties, you have Vin de France. You cannot be in AOC right. because it's forbidden on us. It's totally crazy because these varieties are born in uh, Bordeaux, but you cannot use but. Uh, next year, you can have hybrid and Touriga Nacional from Portugal in AOC, yeah. but you cannot have uh, Tarnay, Casté, saint macaire yeah. uh, Pardot, and they are born in Bordeaux, but they are forbidden, but you can use another variety from another region. It's totally crazy, you know, sometimes uh, the administration, they are totally crazy because they, they never... Uh, Any, any glass of wine. So they don't understand wine. For, for them, wine is only analytics. It's quantity of alcohol, it's quantity of pH, it's quantity of, uh, of uh, tannins, but it's not wine. This is an uh, it's, uh, yeah. industrial product. But maybe, you know, I, I, I fight uh, in AO to, to, to introduce uh, this, uh, these varieties, uh, but it's very, very difficult because uh, it's a, friend, it's a French administration, administration yeah. is very, very difficult to move, but it's the same in uh, America, it's the same everywhere. Yeah. When you try to find administration, it takes a long time. Maybe it takes 10 years, but you know, 10 years, it's a, it's a very, very long time in your life. So I yeah. cannot try yes. 10 years. 10 years, maybe I will be dead. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, are all, so then do you blend your wines after you uh, ferment them? No, so no, you know, uh, I have, uh, I work in Amphora, you know, you, you can see Amphora. Yeah? Amphora, uh huh. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, but show us around at some point if you would. Okay, it's Amphora. Okay. Uh huh. It's Tava Amphora, it's a very good one. So uh, we, we, we work with uh, Amphora, and uh, each variety, we, we make alcoholic fermentation on each terroir and on each variety. Okay, so we okay. have a very, sometimes we have Amphora of two hectolitres or amphora of seven hectolitres. So we, we have exactly uh, a quantity of, uh, of uh, grapes for each, vente, uh, each amphora. We make alcoholic fermentation. We have uh, aging in the cellar during maybe two years or three years. Each always separate, you know. Tarnay is not with Casté. Uh, Casté is not with uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So everything is totally separate. And after two years or three years, we blend. Uh, the varieties, and we try to find what what the what before in Bordeaux uh, people uh, called the fine wine, because today fine wine nobody knows fine wine in Bordeaux. Because if today you want to make a good uh, Bordeaux, you must to have uh, the critics say today. If you want to have a good score, you must to have full body, you must to have fat, you must to have alcohol. But this is not wine. Before Philosella, people speak about fine wine. 
because uh, they speak about purity, because uh, they speak about uh, flowers, and it's totally different what how we describe the wine today. You know, it, it was totally, totally different. And for example, before the some chateau, you know, after Philoxera, some chateau like Chateau Margot, for example, the the regisseur Monsieur Mounier say, since we graft the vineyard, we lost the taste of uh, of uh, Chateau Margot. So in uh, 1904, it, they decide to destroy all the vineyards with graft and they replant ungrafted, okay, until the Second War. Uh, Baron Rothschild said in 1936, uh, the best thing I do in my life is to stay my vineyard ungrafted. Because wow. if we, yes, because when you are ungrafted, you change totally the wine. You speak, once time again, you speak about fine wine. You don't speak full body. If you read the book, the critic, you always you say, it's full body, it's fat, it's fruit, it's... but it's always the same. And it's not the message of the terroir, it's only the, the, the quality of the variety. If you have Merlot with strong maturity, you can, it's easy to have full body, it's easy to have fruit, uh, it's easy to make everything. But if you want the message of the terroir, it's more difficult because it's important to understand your terroir it's important to understand which varieties on each terroir. And today, nobody knows that. Well, people have, have no knowledge of this point. And it's very important to understand your climate. So it's, we, we, today in Bordeaux, it's very important to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, learn again, or to teach again our, our, our job because we forgot everything. Because in Bordeaux, we have a good vigneron. We have a very great vigneron. We have a very fantastic terroir, but we lose it because we stop to work with the terroir. We, we work yeah. only with the quality of the rice. Um, what are you that's doing why, different? You know, that's why I support uh, Jean-Baptiste Duquesne from uh, Chateau Casbonne because he's my uh, first apôtre. You're what, he's your what? <laughs> I support uh, Jean-Baptiste from uh, Chateau Casbonne because he understands. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> so you're doing things differently in the vineyard too, right? You plants plant with higher density and such. Yes, yes, we 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 are we we replant the vineyard exactly like before Philoxera. So today we have twenty thousand vines by hectares, and uh, so it's a lot. We work with mule. We stop. We stop to. Uh, we stop to to work the soil. You know, we have grass on the soil because. I don't think so. It's good to destroy the soil. Okay. So we, we, you know, I want to respect uh, a lot the, the the soil and the vine. So I think to make wine, it must be. Uh, I don't know in English. You understand minimalist? Yeah, minimalist. Same word. You know, so you you can you can move the soil every day. You can make a lot of treatment. You can uh, make a lot of things on the vineyard. You can use sulfur. You can use uh, uh, leaves. You can. Uh, uh, soutirage, you can make soutirage, and you can you can make a lot of a lot of things, but you change the taste of the wine. I think to make a good wine, you must be minimalist. You must to work only when it's necessary. So you need to respect. For example, my vineyard, I would I would like to make my vineyard like a forest. You know, I have a gra grass on the soil. We don't touch the soil because forest grow up without human. And and the and the and the tree are in a good health, and when you work when you make, when you work too much on the vineyard, the 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 feet died after maybe twenty years or twenty five years, and after we need to replant. So it's totally yeah. crazy because when you plant a vineyard, you plant normally you plant for for uh, four hundred years, you 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 plant for two or three or four centuries. You don't plan to change after 20 or, or 50 years. You know, wow. it's, it's, it's become totally crazy. The, 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 the culture of the, of, the, of, the, of the vineyard in Bordeaux has become totally crazy. Today, after 25 years, you must destroy your vineyard to replant again a new vineyard. But if you destroy all 25 years your vineyard, you have no the potential of the of the of the terroir, so it's totally yeah. crazy. What first 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 way first point? We need to preserve the biodiversity, the 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 soil and the quality of the of the of the you know selection massal. We need to have yeah, yeah. to stop to use clone to save biodiversity. <laughs>
After that, we need to replant exactly the good varieties on the good soil. Today, we forget it because we, with, the, with the graft, you can do everything. With the graft, yeah. graft you can plant everything every year. You, you, you just want to understand what you want to make like a final product, okay, with the typicity of the varieties. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's a totally crazy. And, uh, and you know, I, I saw my friend uh, uh, Croix de Labrie, Chateau Croix de Labrie, maybe you know, they, they try to do, to do that also to, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in saint Emilion. Il y a also Chateau Lévéché, they try to do to replant and graft it in saint Emilion. So the new generation change a lot and you yeah. have more and more winemaker. So, but we are, uh, not, we are not enough today but we fight the French administration. We, we, we come back in Vin de France and we work and we work. And I think today uh, we have a successful because we are free. We yeah. are free to, to, to have uh, the good test of Bordeaux and not only the uh, wine with the TPCT because TPCT today, today you now ask us to make a wine with TPCT. What is TPCT? Is to have the test of the Merlot, the same test in the north, in the north of Medoc to the south of the, <laughs> uh, of Grave. So you, you understand it's, it's totally crazy. If you, if you want to the, make a test, uh, only one test of Merlot, eh ben you go in another, in another country and uh, you don't need to have a terroir for that. Yeah. Well, I will tell you over here, um, people are very open to Vin de France. Uh, it's, it's you, someone that you appreciate brings it to you, you taste it, and, and it's not hard to sell to customers and the people are open to it. Um, so in the vineyard, do you trellis? Do you pull the little baby vine, the suckers? I think it's empage. Do you do that kind of thing in the vineyard? Excuse me, do you what? Do you pull the baby vines off? Do you, um, yes, like, yes, this yes, you know, and trellising? Yes, in the vineyard, you know, how, how we plant vine, we put a stick, we put a stick, you know, and it's a, it's, a, it's a wood, okay, we cut and we put in the soil in November. And after it grows up slowly. So we replant by ourselves our vineyard. We don't need to have a pepiniarist or everything. We, we replant, like, like that we can, we can save our biodiversity. But to do that, it's forbidden, you know? It's forbidden in France to, to do your, your own uh, varieties. You need to have a pepiniarist, to have a certification and everything. But it's totally crazy, so I decide to put by myself my, uh, my uh, new plant. And if they want to fight me with the court, okay, we will go to the court and uh, it's not a problem. You know, I'm free. I'm totally, I'm totally free. I can fight everybody. And if they, and if they, if, if they want, we work like a vigneron, but we will go to the court. And if we go to, in, to, in, uh, in, uh, in jail, we will go in jail uh, two months and uh, we will come back on the vineyard because, you know, it's, it's important to save the biodiversity for the next, gener next generation. It's not yeah. only for me. For me, you know, it, I have, uh, 30, I have uh, 43 years old, so I can, uh, you know, for me, it's not a problem. But the next generation, if we do nothing, is it what, what we have in Bordeaux if we do nothing? We have Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon in 20 years with clone. Yeah. Uh, mais, yeah. mais we can have uh, Merlot everywhere and, uh, and Cabernet Sauvignon in the world. And maybe Bordeaux is more of that. Bordeaux is uh, one yeah. culture of wine. It's great terroir. It's great winemaker. So we need to be free. So we fight for it. <laughs> It's very brave of you, and it's very you're very passionate. I, I really I really appreciate that, and uh, it it adds to the biodiversity of. I mean, there's so much Cabernet everywhere and Pinot Noir everywhere. It's it's great. Can can you do me a favor? I'm gonna pull these grapes up. Can you read through them and tell us yeah. Alors, example, what each taste is yeah. like? Alors, I can explain you these varieties. It's very interesting. For example, uh, uh, Tarnay, Tarnay, it was uh, very autochthon, uh, it's very native uh, varieties from Bordeaux. It's very old, so by uh, genetic, we don't know uh, the father and the mother. It's uh, one uh, of, with, uh, cast, with uh, Pardot. Pardot is very old varieties from Bordeaux, but they are very, very old, so we don't know uh, the, the father and the mother. For example, Tarnay, Tarnay it was the, the, one of the most important varieties during the classification 1855. Uh, when, you read, when you read the book, for example, Chateau d'Issan, it was 100% of Tarnay in wow. 1855. Today, wow. nobody, yes, today nobody knows Tarnay, but you know, the, the, the name of Chateau d'Issan was 
uh, ruby of Isan because the color the color it was exactly like ruby and it's very elegant wow. and it's very elegant and it's very nice but we stopped to use tarné after the, the phylloxera because when you graft it's uh, difficult to have uh, berries and it's difficult to 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 work you know because it's uh, it's, it's very difficult to work but it's very 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 good for me you know it's it's maybe it's, it's better than uh, cabernet sauvignon so you know it's very fantastic varieties it's uh, i replant a lot because it's very fine it's very elegant it's beautiful color uh, it's very very good no it's not a cousin of cabernet it's it's we don't know what is it we think it's born before the global warming in europe in uh, 950 years after uh, christ we have a global warming in europe during really century, yes during two centuries and uh, we think uh, we think it was born uh, during this period so last year we have two last year we have two months without rain but only one resist uh, uh, only one resist it was tarné cabernet wow. sauvignon suffer and only one resist it was tarné so it's very fantastic uh, varieties and i think it's the future uh, in bordeaux if the french administration is ready to to put in a cahier des charges the first, the second one is casté uh, uh, casté is uh, it's beautiful grape casté it's uh, also uh, it was very important uh, in uh, in grave area and it's very uh, when you test the casté it's it's test uh, like uh, myrtille what is the name myrtille in english um uh, somebody on here will know it's it, myrtle i think but uh myrtille. No, no, uh, myrtille it's a, you know it's a blueberry it's a, so it's 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 test like a blueberry i think it's blue uh, okay uh, myrtille maybe uh, somebody can uh, uh, i think uh, someone uh, will know yeah yeah uh, Saint Macaire, uh, Saint Macaire, it's uh, blueberry, Saint -Macaire. yeah. Yes, blueberry, yes, yes. Merci. And uh, Saint Macaire, it's uh, it's uh, very specific uh, varieties. Uh, she's born in Saint Macaire. It's in the in, it's in the south of uh, Grave, and it's very good because it's uh, it's test uh, like uh, chocolate on the good soil, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very very strange. Yeah, Pardot, Pardot is beautiful varieties too. It's very very old. You don't we don't know the father and the mother. It's it's fantastic. Carmener, you know, uh, Carmener. Uh, it's uh, it's come from Bordeaux. Today we have no Carmener in Bordeaux, but uh, Carmener is born to Bordeaux. Uh, yeah. Everybody forgot it, but he is born to Bordeaux. Grosse Vidur is the is the mother of Carmener. Grosse Vidur is a very very old varieties. And it's very nice too. It's very close to uh, Petit Vidur. Petit Vidur is, uh, is uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Petit Verdot, you know Cabernet, you know Petit Verdot. And Cabernet Goudab is also very old varieties. And uh, it's very nice. It's very, it's more uh, light than the other one. But it's very, very nice. And they love uh, terroir with a lot of uh, clay. They need a uh, fresh that's fascinating. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Now, um, your wines are not for everyday drinking, are they? Excuse me? Your wines are not for everyday drinking. My, my wine? Yeah. I don't think uh, I can afford your wine. My, the wine I drink every day? No, your wine is very expensive. Can you talk about oh, that? Yes, yes, but you know, because, I, no, yes, it's true, but you know, when people drink Liber Pater, it's a new experience because you taste yeah. the wine like before Phylloxera. And nobody can do that because uh, uh, it's it's a special offer. We it's uh, and you buy one uh, one part of the French history, you buy uh, one part of the the Bordeaux history. And if you want to test the wine, because you know you, everybody knows the classification 1855. Yep. But what do you think will you have in the bottle today? Do you think you have the same wine like in 1855 in the bottle today? All of right. course not, All because right. because of course not because today the the, the vines are graphed before there was ungrafted, so you change the test of the wine and you graft. The varieties are not the same, so you change the, the test of the wine. The density by hectare are not the same, so you change the test of the wine. Be, be, before they don't use chemical product and anything else in the, in, the, in the cellar. And everything, when you do everything, you change totally the test of the wine. So if you want to have the chance to test the, the, the true uh, test of Bordeaux, like before phylloxera, you have only one way, it's Liber Pater. And yes. you produce very small quantity because I want to produce only the best. So if one year is not good, I don't make one. 
Yeah. You know, I, I think a wine, wine is like a piece of art. Yeah. You know? it's, it's perfect or not. If it's perfect, you can make it. If it's, if it's not perfect, you don't make it. Yeah. So I, I, want to be, I want to offer the best of, uh, of my terroir, the best message of my terroir to my client. Because yeah. I, want, I, I want to have the best experience uh, f- from Bordeaux. Because Bordeaux, we can make fine wine. Bordeaux, we have also, one time again, a good winemaker, good terroir. And so I need, we need to fight it. Yeah. No, I think it's fantastic. I, I love it. Um, how big is your domain and how many, how much, how many bottles do you make each year? But it depends. Sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's one thousand uh, bottle. Uh, sometimes it's a zero. For example, on 08, 08, 12, 13, 14, uh, 16, and seventeen, we have no wine. We we don't make wine. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, and after we uh, we put, uh, for example, for the vintage fifteen, we made uh, five hundred bottles. So you know it's wow. very small. Yeah, yeah. So uh, many, many, many people want to test uh, Liberpater, but we have small allocation by country. We have between twelve or twenty-four bottles by country, so it's very, very small. Wow. Yeah. Uh, where did you come up? With, what does Liberpater mean? Liberpater is the name of the Roman god of the wine and the vine. Oh. Yeah. Because you know Bacchus, it's a Greek god. It's like it's like Dionysos, and uh-huh. all the Roman uh, Roman uh, the, in Roman the, in uh, in Roman uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, Pantheon, the Liberpater was uh, the the Roman god of the wine and the vine. And uh, in all the coin in in all the Roman coins, you can see Liberopatri. Liberopatri was Liberpater. Okay, cool. And do you have different, um, different size amphora? Yes, we have uh, this one, you see, Tava. And we, you have uh, also this one, 200. Uh, it's uh, 200 uh, liters. I, I see. see. So it's, uh, it's very small. But we don't, it's very important to explain. You know, amphora, it's very good because when, when you work, uh, when, you, when you want to have the, the message of the terroir, you use the, the, the varieties like a fuse. So after, what, that's why I use amphora, because when you use amphora, you have no exchange between the wine and the amphora. So the, the wine is always exactly like uh, the message of the terroir. If you use barrels, you change the test of the, of the wine because you have the tannin of the barrels and you have also the the cook of the barrel, and you can uh, bring uh, a cigar note, you can re- bring chocolate, chocolate note, enfin, you change the taste of the wine. So if you use amphora, you don't change anything, you have exactly the message of the terroir, because you have no exchange between amphora and wine. So for me, it's the best. And so when you read something about say a Tarnay in the 1800s, and they said, they use a word like, uh, dense or heavy or licorice or caramel or a flavor how do you know your their understanding of that is the same as yours how, how do you understand the old writing about taste and stuff like that but no me you know before phylloxera when they describe the wine they describe the wine only on the fineness only with flowers and uh, they speak about uh, fine mounds and they, they never speak about uh, sugar they never speak That's... about full body they never speak about chocolate they never you know, they, are, they, was, they were not stupid before because, they, you know, people, no, but people, no, but some people told me, yes, but before they don't know what is good wine. But, but. Yes. Sorry, yes. I lost you for a second. Yeah. So you know how, how we can say people don't know how to make good wine. They created Cabernet Sauvignon, they created uh, Petit Verdot, they created Pinot Noir, and people say we had, but before they don't know how to make good wine. It's totally stupid, you know. So so the, before they know uh, more of 
uh, more of uh, we know today about uh, the, the, the terroir, about the taste of the wine, about everything. So we need to rediscover everything. But for sure, when they describe the wine before Philip Serra, they, they, they never use the, the, the vocabulary we use today. They, it was more about the fine, uh, finesse, finesse, more, they speak about That's fine wine. Yeah, that's interesting. So, do you you don't use barrels at all? It goes directly from amphora to bottle. Yeah, yeah. You you, you make an alcoholic fermentation in amphora, and we have aging in amphora too. We don't use any barrels because one time again, when you use barrel, you, you change the taste of the wine. Yeah. And what so, I want to do, I want the, the message of my terroir, not the message of the barrel. And how long do you age things in amphora? It's between two years or three years. It depends of the year, and it uh, depends of lot of things. But we, 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 don't, we don't we do nothing. You know, we after acidic fermentation, we put the wine in the barrel in the amphora. We close the amphora, and we and we don't touch during two years or three years. Wow. We have the we have the lees in the bottom, and uh, we work with a little uh, we we work with a little reduction because we don't use sulfur. We have any sulfur in the in the wine. Right. So uh, everything is natural, you know, it's a natural uh, uh, levure. I don't know the name of levure in English. Uh, the levure. No. Yes. Somebody, yes. Will, somebody will say. Um, how, uh, so then I'm going to ask Celine, I'll do that in one second. So then once the bottle, it, wine is in bottle, how long does it, does it age like a Bordeaux? No, you can. know, what is very interesting, what is, what is, it's a good question because, uh, you know, when, when, you, uh, when you read the, the old book, they, they say, uh, yes, the view is yes, uh, east, east, yeah. yes, we use uh, natural, uh, indigenous okay. yeast and we don't use nothing. And uh, uh, what is very interesting, when you read the, the book uh, uh, after Philoxera, they compare uh, wine with, uh, with grape and wine with, with, uh, with ungrafted. Okay, so when they compare two wines, they say, when when we use when we use uh, graft, uh, the vine, the wine are more full body, are, are less fine. They are ready to drink early, but oh. they collapse after thirty years old. Wow. Okay, and when you when you use when you use ungrafted, you need to wait fifteen or twenty years old before to open the bottle, but the bottle is for eternity. And today, again, if you test a bottle of 18, uh, for example, 1860, uh, and you test a bottle of 1960, the bottle of 1860 is more fresh that, than the bottle of uh, 1960. And they have one century of difference. Wow, you know? that's that's so, not so, so it's it's totally you change totally because you know when, when you when you use graft the 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 vitis vinifera have the chemical composition of the graft taking the soil, but when you put cabernet sauvignon directly in the soil, it takes the chemical product the chemical production he need by himself, not only what is available by the graft. And yeah. when you change the quantity of a molecule, or when you have a sm very small quantity the, of a composition change, you change the test of the wine. No. It's, it's, it's totally easy to understand because it's like, uh, it, it, you know, the, 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 if you have some, if it, the, the graph is like a filter. It's like a filter. So if you have a filter, you, you change something. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to let you go so soon, but I just want to ask uh, if you would repeat the what your terroir is like. Cause there's a lot of people on here that were not at the beginning when you spoke about why your soil allows you to use ungrafted vines. Uh, uh, my, my terroir, my terroir, why I can use ungrafted. Yeah, just repeat for new people yes, that weren't here at the beginning. Yes, you know, we, 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 have a very sp we are in a very special place because this place, it's, uh, the name is... Uh, is uh, the, the Anticlinal. Anticlinal was created, it's a small island created at the same time that uh, the mountain of Pyrenees. It was uh, 50 million years old. And uh, during uh, this period, it was an island or it was uh, close to the continent. And after, it was a big, big river in the top of this Anticlinal, in the north of this Anticlinal and in the south of this Anticlinal. You have a big river, and this bigger uh, bring a small gravel from uh, Pyrenees and uh, mass and the massive central. Mm -hmm. and so 
So we are in the bottom of this big river. You know, it's, uh, we are in the bottom of the big river. That's why we have a lot of uh, gravel. But sometimes we have clay, we have a humid zone, we have a gravel with clay because it, it's the bottom of the river. So sometimes you have a mix and sometimes you have only gravel. You know, and, it, and we are in the top of the left bank. We are, in the, uh, we are very close to the forest. Uh, and uh, we are in the top of the left bank because it's uh, the ground zero of the left bank. Uh, it's, it's difficult for me to explain, but uh, two million years old, the Medoc collapse. Mm -hmm. And the river, to start, the river go to the east, to the west. And okay. after Medoc collapse to two million years old, right. the river go to the south, to the north. And they uh, bring this uh, small gravel we have on the vineyard to Pesach and Medoc. That's why the hills are less and less high because more you are far mm. to this uh, river, more uh -huh. the gravel uh, move, uh, less the gravel moves, so the hills the hill are, oh. uh, more, are more and more small. You know, and we are, we are at uh, 80, me 80 meters, okay. Okay? and uh, maybe Pesach is 40 meters, and Medoc it's 10 or 20 uh, and 0 meters because this quantity of gravel is less important more you are far of the uh, of the this ground zero. So it's very unique place. You know, the, the place of uh, Liberpater is very 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 unique. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds it sounds like it. Well, I'm gonna let you go. I, I've gone over what I normally talk because I don't think people want to sit in front of their phone for a, for 40 minutes. But it's been too fascinating to stop talking. Um, <laughs> Thank you very, very much. It's really Thank a pleasure to much. chat with you. And uh, I hope to meet you in person when I get over there next time or, or see you. you. And you are, you are welcome on the vineyard and everybody is welcome because uh, if it's easy to, to come to see me, to, to come to test Liberpater on the Amphora. You just to contact me and uh, you are, everybody is welcome to explain the terroir uh, to Bordeaux, the varieties, to test uh, all the varieties. You are welcome. Everybody I love it. Oh, one quick last question. Um, my friend Celine asked, "How do you sell your wines through Negociant?" No, no, no. We have uh, <laughs> we have uh, direct. Uh, we we work with clients. We have few Negociant, but very small quantity. But we I have see. a very we have a private client. They buy directly. You know, it's a wine collector. But uh, we have very small quantity by your countries. Yeah. So we 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 work directly. But uh, you know, for example, during the, the coronavirus, we have no problem to sell the wine because we know our clients. We don't wait negotiate. So right. we, we, have, it's not, we have any impact our, in our business today because uh, every, the people uh, uh, who drink Liberpater want to drink again before to die. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating. Listen, you've been amazing to listen to. I, I hope we can talk again sometime and I, I do look forward to seeing yeah, you over time. there. Okay, yeah, thank you, sir. You take care of yourself. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.